In this video, we're gonna talk about camera tracking with the Zeiss SynCraft scenario. Real quick, you're watching VP Land. Special thanks to our sponsors for helping make our NAB coverage possible, Blackmagic and Atomos. And now back to the video. All right, what's up? I'm here with Nick from Zeiss. Nick, good to see you again. Yeah, hey, Joey, good to see you, man. So walk me through what we got with the scenario. Yeah, definitely though. So uh, we're showing SynCraft scenario. It's our real-time camera and lens tracking system. Um, showing a real live virtual production uh, set up here, green screen comp within Unreal using live effects. So scenario, our camera tracking system, really cool because we do not require markers in order to track. So we have our sensor on top of our camera here. So this is called our camera bar. It's looking up at the environment and creating a point cloud off of natural features. So like these rafters up here in the convention center? Exactly, so any static contrast points it recognizes uh, as, a, as a point and builds a point cloud off of what it sees within that environment. So as you move the camera, it will learn new points and build its own point cloud um, within our software. And then uh, sensor is running, or camera's running too. Yeah, pieces. so we're, we're streaming the data from our sensor into this box it's called our link. And this is aggregating that data and sending it over an ethernet cable back to our server, which is living over here. And that's when it was running the software. We're also taking lens information in kind of a unique way. Uh, we're using a Supreme Prime 18. This pinout data from the lens is being sent over LDS on the Alexa. Um, and we're collecting that information over SDI. So the SDI feed is also going back to our server, syncing with time code, and we're also seeing the lens information. So that's any of your video and all of your lens data. Are we Correct. Okay. Yeah. We can take lens information through various encoders along with XD and slash I directly into this box. It's a bit more of an elegant solution going through the camera and one less cable. And where are we now? I know we talked about this in our chat. Uh, we're going a lot more in depth of this. Um, but you, what we talked, I think, was currently just Zeiss lenses. Correct. But you're expanding to calibration with other lenses. So where, yeah. where are we at now? So uh, right now, within the uh, phase of release, uh, our system supports Zeiss lenses natively in our software. Um, so there's no lens calibration required. You simply choose the lens that you want to use, and you're done. There's nothing more you need to do. In May, we will support third-party lenses. So that's upwards of 100 templates that we will import into our software. Everything from Ingenue, Cook, Canon, Fujinon, that you'll be able to choose, you know, the particular camera lens combination, um, and then fine tune that template as needed. So removes a lot of the work with calibration. Nice. And uh, what are some of the other tracking methods that we can do here? Yeah, so right now we're tracking natural features as described. So it's very flexible, indoors, outdoors. You can power on the system, start tracking, no time. Um, if you are in challenging lighting conditions and maybe it's too dark or there's lasers flying around, you may want to use um, infrared light to track, which we can also do. Or traditionally, we can track off reflective markers as well. So if you're in a studio, you already have markers, uh, we can track those as well. Nice. The calibration. So tell me about the, yeah. uh, how, how easy it is or what's the process to calibrate? So is from a hardware perspective, you set up the sensor. This is omnidirectional, so you can mount this anywhere on or near the camera. Typically, we like to have it on top of the camera facing the ceiling. Uh, if that's not possible, if there's not enough contrast points, you can face have the sensor positioned underneath the lens facing the ground or straight ahead. So really any static points is what we you know tend to have the sensor pointed at. Um, again, that data is being sent into our link, which is being converted to Ethernet back to our server, which is living over here. Yeah. Usually we have our server positioned somewhere near the renderer. Uh, in this case, we're using Unreal, um, powered by Silverdraft. Uh, so our server looks like this. It's a small box, uh, about this size. Uh, that's what's running our software. The software is browser-based, so all you need to do is plug in the IP address of the server, and we have access to the software in any browser window. So one of our biggest improvements since Zeiss acquired NCAM is our software. It's extremely easy to use. It's intuitive and very convenient. So once you have the hardware mounted, maybe it takes five or five minutes or so to get it set up, um, we power on our software. And there's three tabs that you really want to worry about here. The first is the equipment tab. This is where you're setting up your camera and lens configuration for the day. You can do this beforehand or the day of the set. So you'd come in here, click add new camera. You can nickname this whatever you'd like and choose from a variety of different brands. We'll continue to add to this template library, Alexa LF. This is arguably the most important part is the sensor size, the active recording format that you're planning to use. You can choose that, or you can always enter this information manually, but we've made it kind of nice and easy to choose from these lists so of templates. If you're using a camera that's not on the list, you could enter your data right now. Right. Once you've entered your camera information, this, this is saved, stored on the server. So if you're a studio with multiple cameras, you can all add all of these and save them. From there, 
you add your lenses to your camera profile. Um, so again, we just support Zeiss uh, and Aries Zeiss lenses right now. So you would choose Zeiss, Supreme Prime, your uh, focal length. A scale code is a unique identifier on every Zeiss lens that tells you the tolerance of every lens. So it gives you extreme accuracy. Uh, it's almost like a serial number for a serial number. Uh, so you would choose the appropriate scale code, which is listed on the lens itself and add that lens to your profile. Uh, once again, by May, we will have third-party lens support. So it will work very similar. You open up this, um, this window, you choose your lens that you're using and add lens to your configuration. There will be again, a, like a refinement tool that you would click to refine the lens profile if you need to. And then sometime in the fall towards closer towards the end of the year, we will open up manual calibration. So if the lens isn't in the template library, you can manually calibrate it yourself. So once you're done setting up your equipment, you can move over to the tracking tab. And this is where you're setting up your tracking configuration or really the environment you're shooting in. Again, we support natural markers, natural features, which is what we're doing here, learning the environment. If you'd like, if you have markers already set up, you can track reflective markers as well. So you're choosing, you know, which one is best dependent on the environment that you're in. The other mode of tracking that I think I mentioned in the podcast that we're really excited about is syncing to an LED volume. So through frame remapping or ghost frame, we can um, put up digital markers on an LED volume. That hasn't been enabled in the software yet, but you would see that here once uh, the new software update comes. So really three main ways to track, natural features, reflective markers, and LED markers. And how do you figure out the offset of where your tracker is on the camera? Good lead in. Um, so once you've set up your, uh, your tracking configuration, um, you can, you know, do all sorts of these. If you have different studios and you want to, um, save the point cloud and zero, zero point, uh, location for each studio environment, you can create all sorts of different tracking configurations, um, as much as you want. So we'll go into this, uh, this configuration just for natural features and you can see right away, it's automatically tracking the environment. So it's building a point cloud. Uh, off what this, the sensor is seeing. So it's seeing all these points of contrast uh, within the ceiling. Also, it's picking up some points uh, up here on this, uh, the wall and remembering you know, as you're moving the camera and panning and tilting. We've already set a zero point here, but I can do this again just to show you how it works. Um, so once you're in this tracking tab, you know, we're tracking, we're up and running. There's two things that you have to do to really complete setup before the start of the day. First is the camera bar offset. So as you say, we need to know the relationship between the sensor and our cam bar and the main camera sensor, the nodal point of the camera. Um, so how do we do that? We have a very unique, uh, awesome tool that allows you to um, quickly get this offset. So we'll click this button and we have a visual guide that walks you through step-by-step -step how to do this process. So we've already mounted the sensor bar somewhere on or near the camera. Uh, we choose our lens calibration and camera configuration that we've previously done in the last step. Now we can adjust the exposure of the sensor to make sure, you know, it's bright enough, which it is. Now we're going to place this fiducial marker, which you can see over here next to the TV, somewhere within the environments, usually on a C-stand or a chair, um, anywhere where the camera is kind of positioned. Step over here now, and I'm going to swing the camera this way to show you how this works. So, um, as you can see, the sensor is mounted on top of the camera. What I'm going to do is tilt the camera down so the sensor can see that fiducial marker. And you can watch over on the screen that fiducial marker is currently red. And as I tilt down towards the bar, it snaps into place. So, you, went, you saw it went from red to green. So that means the, the bar sees that, that unique marker. Now we're gonna do the exact same thing with the main camera. So we're gonna tilt up. And you can see the camera locks into place. So we'll go over here and our calibration's complete. That's it's right. that fast. So if you've done this a few times, um, I'll just open it up again. If you've done this a few times, you can just go skip introduction and go straight to this point. Okay. So it's extremely fast. Uh, and all you have to do is, you know, all you have to do is do it once. Yeah. Uh, I mean, yeah. I mean, that's crazy. Now, uh, after you've done your offset, so you've learned this relationship, as long as you don't bump this or move it, 
you don't have to do that again. But it is nice if you want to break down the camera, move to a different um, position, put the camera on a jib or what have you. Um, if for whatever reason that relationship is broken, all you have to do is that offset again, which takes a minute. Nice. Last thing uh, I'll mention um, with the configuration is you need to set your zero point. So how do you do that? Again, super easy. We come over here to alignment. We click edit world alignment. And our system sets a zero point based off of a natural feature point that you choose. So we can come back over here. And uh, we've just placed a little uh, like black washer on the um, on the chair here. You can see it. If you want, you can use like a piece of gaff tape or even like a marker, you know, anything to yeah set a zero point off of. So I come over to our software and then you can see all these points that it's found. I just click that little washer, hit save. And then if I want, I can also align the floor with the accelerometer built into the sensor. It levels it out. And we're done. All that data is being sent natively into Unreal. So we can see we have a live feed coming into Unreal now. I have to adjust my key of my dog, but you can tell uh, we are now within Unreal. Uh, let's see. Yeah, that's extremely easy. Yeah, that's crazy. Um, yeah, I mean, so with the rise of virtual production, sort of what, what are you seeing? What's kind of getting you excited about the future and like all the different uh, advances? Yeah, definitely. I mean, with NCAM, um, we, we, this technology has been around for several years now. We've, we've had this ability to track natural features and uh, be very flexible. But with the acquisition, uh, when, when Zeiss uh, brought us aboard, um, you know, they've really done a great job with this software, this user interface, this ease of use. Uh, and really what we're trying to do is make camera tracking um, available to everybody, you know, really democratize tracking. Accessibility is, is what we're about. Um, we feel like camera tracking has always been kind of a, a difficult process, time consuming, um, complicated, uh, you know, not always convenient. And with this system, we believe it's going to be much more accessible to productions, um, require very little to no training. So we're very excited about that. Uh, Zeiss is also working very hard to provide a very fast workflow for post VFX and allow um, users to access our lens characteristics, distortion, shading, um, all in a very nice, convenient post workflow. So I've shown a pretty standard virtual production application today, but uh, what we can also do in our software is record all that data. So if you don't want to stream to Unreal, we can record camera tracking and lens information um, by just hitting start record and it's syncing to the time code of the camera. Once we stop recording for the day or for the shoot, we can open up another program that we have called export. We load those clips into export. We can then have the post soup clip off any time code they want from these data recordings and export that into an, one of a number of output formats, uh, including FBX. We can also export um, distortion maps as well. So you can turn on and off distortion maps. Once you've exported it, we have a very basic demo over here um, where you can import it into Nuke or Blender or any post VFX software um, to analyze and use uh, your footage. Great, and you just bring all that camera data right into it. Yep. Nice. Um, we have a post workflow as well as that live uh, virtual production workflow. Camera tracking. Yep. Yeah. And so how does the, uh, the pricing of the uh, SyncRaft scenario work? Yeah. So uh, we have two uh, kind of areas to look at. We have the hardware and the software. Uh, hardware is pretty straightforward. Uh, basic system costs anywhere between thirteen and $16,000, depending on the accessories that you choose. So you own the hardware. Um, we license our software in weekly, monthly, yearly, and three-year plans. So if you're project to project, um, you can license the software weekly or monthly, anywhere from $1,200 a week to about $3,000 a month, um, or annual licenses are around $12,000 a year. Uh, so it's really dependent on your project, your production cycle. Um, we try and be convenient to, uh, you know, to those, those pricing plans. But um, yeah, if you wanted to do a year with the hardware, you're looking at around $27,000 or you can go hardware and then license it weekly. Cool, well thanks a lot Nick, appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, thanks time. Joey. And that is it for this episode. Be sure to check out the rest of our NAB coverage over here at this playlist and hit the subscribe button for more videos like this. Thanks for watching, I will catch you in the next episode.